rejection is so painful because you start to feel like you're constantly being told no. You know, Lynn, I fought so much with being told no so often, I didn't believe when people said yes to me. So you're so used to being told no. In fact, I'm, it became, I have really had to rewire myself now, but I was so used to being told no. So if someone said yes to me quickly, I used to feel like, hey, what is the issue? What do you want? Oh, where is it coming? Mm -hmm. It's coming, it's coming somewhere. So Nayera has now been dumped, yes. but Moji is still my friend. So we went for Bible study, he dropped me home. One time we said, ah, it's like 8 p.m., why don't we enter? So we used to sit around Valley Arcade, why yes. don't we enter the galitos over there and just have something to eat? So I was like, ah, why not? So we went, we were eating, we were eating, we were eating. Long and short is that after that, Moji and I became very close as friends. A year later, we were girlfriend and boyfriend. A year later. A year later. Learning yourself is not learning your strengths. It's actually learning your weaknesses. What now? Absolutely. Say what? Everybody knows your strength, Lynn. Everybody knows you're a great speaker. Everybody knows you're a great storyteller. Everybody knows you bring it out. But what makes Lynn weak? That's where Lynn will fail. If I don't learn my weaknesses, I'm not preparing myself. That was my first gathering ever. I had never done a physical event as Nyaweta. But when I told Kambua on DM on Instagram, I'm thinking about doing this thing and I'd love it to my first guest. And she said, yes, Wera, yes. And we met and we talked about the event and what we want to talk about and we went through it. But she said yes to me when nobody else would be willing to. Because before her, I had reached out to so many people and nobody was responding. And so, she becomes an indicator for me. I mean, Kambua is Kambua. Let's not talk about her like she's like a small girl. Yes. I don't deserve for her to be on any space that I'm on. But for her to believe in me and say yes, it made me realize how stupid would I be to say no to you because you're starting. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gugi. To be honest, I think I'm the one who is going to benefit most uh, from today's conversation. I look at my guest and then sometimes when I even watch a couple of interviews she has done before, I would never have imagined her as someone who did not believe in her voice or someone who did not believe in herself. And she comes highly, highly recommended. I see your comments even on Instagram. I see the them on YouTube and you guys have said Lynn can we please have Nyawera and she is here today and I hope by the end of today's episode you get to believe that you are enough no matter what has been said no matter what you've gone through no matter what you are going through right now what careers you are navigating right now I hope you get to believe you are enough I honestly love her energy like even before we started we were just laughing and I'm like how do you get to do this you know I admire extroverted souls because me to be honest I was telling her the introvert in me cannot even be in a room with like 200 people and I look at her with so much admiration she is a voice and I know you love her and I hope her story gets to encourage you but before that I want to say thank you so much to our amazing partners at Rent Score for always coming through now let me tell you what Rent Score is all about I know majority of us are tired of paying rent but what if I told you you could actually own a place uh, using the same rent that you pay you all you have to do is check them out for details and also ask them those questions how do I stop finally paying rent and owning this place uh, and always feel free to give me your feedback again their contact details are on the screen and also there's a link pinned on the comment section where you can be able to get details on the amazing properties they have and how you can be able to make those places your home. Before I let her introduce herself, I have to say thank you so much to you guys for being incredible supporters of our work. Look at us. We've done it, guys. We are heading to 1 million subscribers. Please remember to subscribe. You will help our network. You know, get make sure that our content gets to reach more people and it's not. it comes at zero cost. So hit the subscription button and of course to say thank you to the amazing team Scholar Muga and the entire management at 
LNN for coming through and of course our super producer Dama for putting this episode together. Alisema nisposema hivo, nijue nitaenda wapi after this show. So Dama, thank you so much. And now without further ado, please allow me to let our guest today introduce oh herself. My Drum roll. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wish people would know how <laughs> I am managing my composure. What do you mean? Lean, I have been a fan of what you do only because of a few reasons one i find you very authentic really? like like i watch i'm like what and yeah you're emotionally real you know <laughs> like it comes from somewhere but also i think i really appreciate the fact that you're very big on impactful conversations yeah. and so we see what they do thank you and so when i got the call first i was like no no stop it it's not it's not april fool's day stop not yet so <laughs> when i i read the message like three times i said god is it time i've made it I forwarded the message to everybody. Like, no. okay, do you know where I've been invited to? You all of you are playing small. Respect me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so honored. No. I'm so honored, Lean. And I, I said for so many who maybe don't come to the studio, is that thank you so much for what you're doing. I appreciate um, it. Meanful don't celebrate people who do what you do. And we see the haters and we think that they're rubbish because they don't understand the magnitude of what you're doing. And so we really, really support what you're doing. Thanks, so no, we know. love you big time. Why you gotta do this yes. right now? Now, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to, I was like, okay, how do I do this? Because you, know, you can tell I practice because in my head I was saying, okay, so now what else she asked me? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I'm so excited and I'm very honored I by this invitation. I received the flowers yes, received on, the, on the platform. I receive it. We don't care about the haters. Yes. Uh, something I've always been told mm -hmm. you don't go throwing stones at a tree with no fruit Super. so Ooh. if you're throwing mm. something you got and whether you hate or not the mm. fact you are watching you're still a fan Correct. so you're still blessing you're me, still so. blessing <laughs> me so we're gonna keep it I moving. love it but I'm, I, I, love I, it. I, I love you oh I I'm, love you as well I love my homeboy too I gotta give a shout out to Moji <laughs> yes please <laughs> you know when you when you are here floating mm -hmm. with Joshua T, comrade uh -huh. they start yes. comrade I was like ah Moji see we are comrades too <laughs> like you know but I appreciate oh, you coming. Yeah. Honestly, I want to give you your flowers you, before we even start the mm. conversation. You are a voice. Mm. Honestly, this is not because you're on the show. But, you know, I watch you and I just get rejuvenated. Oh, really? You are such a voice like someone would actually be looking at you right now mm. and they were torn between should I keep pushing or should I not? Yeah. And I would just tell people, look at Nyawira. Like you have all the reasons yeah. to quit because the world needs quitters. Yes. There are people who are interested in you quitting. Yeah. There are people who are interested in making sure your purpose yeah. never reaches yes. where it needs to reach. Yes. But then you are the voice. You are disrupting. Mm. You are mm. telling people, come on, you can do this. Mm. Like So you are the reason I believe a lot of people are getting the courage to face their fears and yeah. say, I'm going to do this. Oh, wow. oh, wait, sorry, introduction. Yeah. Yes, you see, right? you think you think we've been best friends forever, but maybe we are. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic! So my name is Nyawira Gashugi Mohe. I am a content creator. Um, I occupy different spaces. So in content, I exist as misunderstood. Yes. And I'll be telling you why. Yeah. Um, I write. I've written three devotionals now. Um, it's not a secret. I absolutely love Jesus. Um, yeah. I'm married to a great man. Um, a fantastic man, a fantastic man. Good. And um, yeah, I love having conversations. I am a believer in the power of using what you have to do something. And so that's what that's what I do. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, I was I was watching somewhere because, mm -hmm. again, I told you earlier, I was having a conversation with Amy Koske. Yes. Yes. And we were talking about the importance of int intentional mm -hmm. parenting. Yes. And she did mention the role her parents would play, affirming her, you're great, you're beautiful, yeah. you're everything, yeah. you know. And, of course, I know maybe for you, you don't get to celebrate that mm -hmm. with your parent mm -hmm. but what do you remember mm -hmm. being said to you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that has helped you get where you are oh, right now such a good question mm -hmm. so growing up i grew up in a very affirming home yeah. very affirming mm -hmm. my mom rest her soul she was a fantastic believer of anything i did uh, my dad as well and i think growing up first i was always made sure so 
my my siblings are very confident, and I and so we always the dance always spoke out louder than other people, mm -hmm. and so my folks would always make sure that they equipped us. So you'd read books, and so some of the things I always had growing up was you have something to say, don't be quiet. Why did you go there and you didn't say anything? And so from a very young age, I was made aware that I had something to say. It may have been nonsense <laughs> because I was a child. <laughs> but I, I look back now and I know what that has done for me. And so many a times, even now when I'm asked to speak, one of the things I hear first in my head is that I have something to say. I have something to say. And so growing up, I was really affirmed about it. My dad... Um, was very intentional in raising us. So we're three girls and a boy. Mm -hmm. And all of us in our own unique spaces have never been the type to shy away from leading or stepping up and mm -hmm. saying what we feel about certain issues. Always in a respectful fashion for sure, but it's always been allowed for us to speak up. And so in our house, it was to be a very loud space. Because people think I'm loud, they haven't met my family. Yes. Oh my God! <laughs> it felt like there were microphones everywhere, you know. But they, they've all, they've, there's always been an environment that allowed for us to be to be heard. And so I think that's the space I've given my my family have always allowed me to be that person. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, that's beautiful. Mm. So you have something to say. You say always it. have something to say. Okay, say it. Say it. Yes. But then I'm interested mm -hmm. at this point where the affirmation is. Or, it's it's been done already mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know you have a voice speak mm -hmm. what made you mm -hmm. become quiet mm -hmm. what made you mm -hmm. become suffer you know struggle with low self-esteem yes. your parents are saying this yes you growing up in a loving yeah. a farming home yeah. where does the breaking mm -hmm. come from mm -hmm. so many things and i think in my story one of the places that broke me the most was the dilemma and i think it's the it is a dilemma where you know you have something but no one wants to allow you to say it. And mm. so when you grow up, you you always, you know, as a kid, every space is created for you. Go to school, you'll speak there. Um, go to church, you'll speak there. Go hang out with family, you'll speak there. But when you become older, what I think God allows you to do is that he ceases to, he stops making you comfortable and he pushes you to create your own platform. But even you would know, Lynn, that you don't wake up one day and you have the world and you have everything figured out. No. And so to figure it out, that silenced me because I began to feel I have something to say, but no one is allowing me to say it. I felt like I was, I was setting myself up all the time. I'm ready. You know, switch me on. Put me on a place. I'm going to say something. But every time that happened, doors closed. You know, it's the power of hindsight because now I know why they closed. Just because you have something to say doesn't mean it's the time to say it. Should we start clapping? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I learned that so painfully. Because you think you have you think you you have the power and you know you have something to say, your words can change the world. But God has a process, is that sometimes He will tell you, be quiet, I need you to listen. But now at the time you feel like you're being denied. But now I know. I mean, I, I look at the doors God closed and I look at the lessons I learned. And I look at them and I'm like, wow. I'm so happy I learned it that way. Mm. Because had I learned it later, it would have cost me so much. Wow. Yeah. You're happy you learned it. At the time. At the time. Even though it was painful, mm. I learned it. Yeah. Now take us yes, there. Yes, because of the pain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Yes. What people don't understand is that it sounds nicer when you're on this end. But rejection is so painful. Because you start to feel like you're constantly being told no. You know, Lynn... I fought so much with being told no so often, I didn't believe when people said yes to me. So you're so used to being told no. In fact, I'm, it became, I have really had to rewire myself now. But I was so used to being told no. So if someone said yes to me quickly, I used to feel like, hey, what is the issue? What do you want? Where is it coming? Mm -hmm. It's coming, it's coming somewhere. But I, I mean, it, the rejection was ridiculous. Whether it was emceeing opportunities, I mean, I've shared this like a broken record. Mm -hmm. There was a time I used to think, well, I, I still have my moments. But there was a time I really used to think, I am the answer to all the events in Kenya. Me, call me, I'll MC, I'll bring your house down. I'll, I got you. I'm the one, you know? And so in my level of confidence being at 100% and 100% also in naivety, I was writing, um, sending my rate cards and my profiles to different people. And I remember, and I, I, I can give her her flowers, I spoke to a lady called Becky Mwikia. Mm. And I told her, Becky, I'm thinking about this thing. And she told me, yeah, great. So let me make a profile. She made my first profile. Because she believed in me. Yes. And I was like, okay, yes, I have people in my corner. So I shared it and I shared it and I shared it. And every time I got an email saying no, no. 
So one time there was a, a show that was coming up on, on a local station in Kenya. Yeah. And it was so funny because I saw when the host had left. I watched the closing show and I said, it's my time. This platform has been made for me. God, you have closed that door so time I can enter it. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. So I called people. I was like, why don't you give me the producer of that show? Let me call. See confidence. And I called and I was like, okay, so this girl has left. This guy has left. I think it's time for me to come. I'm willing to come and do a screen test. Mm. He's like, no, <laughs> we've given someone else. Oh. Because also in their head, and I get it, is who are you? You know, it's the, you know, I think God blesses us and I know he blesses us and he equips us, but he doesn't allow you to start doing certain things if you haven't learned how to do them. So like I wanted to, I wanted to like get the wine from the vineyard, but I didn't know how the grapes are planted. So it's the, it, it's the curse of knowing that you have something, but you're so confident. And also that confidence, there's a fine line between confidence and foolishness because confidence can tell you I am, but foolishness will tell you I'm the only one, you know? Yeah, no one else can do it like me. Wait a minute. <laughs> Everybody else can do it like you. And so confidence can become entitlement because you start to think to yourself, I deserve every opportunity. And you may, you may, you yes. may deserve it, but no one has said it's yours all the time because there's space for all of us. So why do you think you? So looking back, I know what that pain made me feel. I remember when I read that email and I was like, what? I remember the call. I can't even tell you even how I addressed that day when I got the call because I've never forgotten it. But I think God allows those memories to never leave you so that you never forget that to be put somewhere is honor. And even honor comes with something. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't paid the price. Yeah. I love that the, the preparation mm. part is what many of us don't want to do yep. right now, mm -hmm. especially the curse of knowing I have it yep. in me. Hey, me, my character <laughs> development, maybe I come on your show because <laughs> yes, I'm going to yes. respect it's not my show, but the character development yep. you go through when you know, God, I think I can do this. Mm. This is me. And then you keep showing up and they keep choosing different yep. people, different people. Yep. And you wonder, Kwani, what, what have I done? And you know, it's so funny when they're yes. choosing other people, mm. what happens that people don't tell you is that you start to compare yourself with the others. Yeah. It's okay. And you you find yourself in a rat race where you start to say, why did they choose Lynn? Is it how she dresses? Is it what she spoke? Is it how she carried herself? And so what do I end up doing as Nyalira? I start becoming Lynn. So I lose myself completely because they chose Lynn because of something. So I study Lynn. And that silence is God's blessing in you because what he's put in you is yours. Why? But when I'm trying so hard to be you, I'm losing me. I will say it like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. no, you, you're making sense because mm. I've been there. Mm. And I keep saying, I, I've spoken about it in a video I did. Yeah. on my, If you scroll down the YouTube <laughs> channel before it was LNN, I spoke about it. Yeah. I would constantly see, oh, they chose them because they have the wigs, the yep. accent. Yep. There's even like a video I'll upload for mm. people on my IG. Mm. I had gone to do a PTC. We were just covering these normal things. Yeah. And I remember something in my head telling me, you're not doing it good enough. So I was actually there with my microphone, oh my, my wig, and the twang. Why? Because I know, I know, I know. <laughs> because I saw it yes. in someone yep. else. Yep. And I thought, the reason these people are on screen mm -hmm. and it's not me, because mm -hmm. I don't have the wig, I don't have the accent, I have nothing against yes. wigs, you know. But I felt not enough. Yep. And then you have to constantly now wanting to become these mm. people. Hi. It's, a, it's such a bad rat race because you never win. By the way, you never win. And the more you become, a, you know, you can believe a lie can go before it, you're caught. But so you keep on lying, lying, lying. The day you're caught, you're compared. Yeah. And you lose. You're yes. not the original. We can all tell. Good. You know, one of the things, it's so funny you said it. When I got into this content space, I remember it was because of my friend Ben. Yes. So Ben, on his <coughs> podcast, we went on his video, we had a few interviews, and Ben and I are very good friends. So yes. naturally, we are, we'd have a, a good conversation. But I remember when now it was time to transition, because his wife told me, his wife then now, his girlfriend then now wife mm. told me, why don't you start your own thing? And I was like, why not? The biggest dilemma I had when I said why not was how would I sound? Would people be comfortable knowing that by the 
all these things I'm telling you, they're fully Bible because that's what I know. I like, I'm not coming to tell you like, you know, this is how to slim your body. I, that's not my gospel. So would people be comfortable with my tone? And that was the conflict for almost a month because I'd comfortably say, I haven't seen believers who go far in this space. So would I be welcome? Because I was now comparing. I began to think to myself, talk about God, but don't talk about God, Sana. Whisper him. Don't say Jesus. Don't say God. You're sounding too religious. And one of the biggest conflicts I ended up having was that I would always feel like, I want to tell you that this is actually a scripture. I really do. And so when I'm preparing, I would read the scripture and say, how will I see this Lord sounding jesus -y? But then I told myself one day, if you don't get it by now, <laughs> you're the one with the problem. Yes. So just get in, get in shape. And I think God honors the disruptor. He does. I mean, lean. <laughs> I mean, lean. <laughs> so, no, God, you are amazing. God honors. I've been, I've been there before. Completely. You know, there are moments I felt like, I don't want to do this show yes. because someone is saying this and this. But then I'm like, ah, you deal. Mm -hmm. But this part mm -hmm. where you know your truth, yes. but you don't know how people yes, we'll will receive it. Receive it it's a it's the it's the biggest lie it's the biggest lie because you're not <coughs> sharing your truth for receiving yeah can, if that was the case jesus would didn't have been alive can we be a bit <laughs> spiritual though? absolutely because okay, i've always said i'll acknowledge my mm -hmm. god in public in private yes. anywhere me i'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm i love god yeah. god i say this is god's work you yes. know? but why is it so hard sometimes mm -hmm. to have a conversation about god yes. and why do conversations on god sound a bit quote unquote mm -hmm. boring ha now because that's an interesting one mm. They, they may sound boring, in my perception, they sound boring when the person saying he doesn't have a real understanding. If I know for sure that God is the giver of all gifts, he says it in his Bible, in his word. So why then would I come and make you feel like I'm going to talk down at you because you don't know your gift is from God? I think the strength we have about talking about God is not because we need to sound deep or we need people to understand Nyawira is a believer, don't doubt it. I think we are tasked to talk about God so that other people can believe. I mean, in Matthew, he says, your light is on, at, up, on, a, on a hill. So that when they see this light, they will believe in my father. So if you're comfortable having light but hiding it, who are you showcasing? Yeah. So there's a conflict between the spiritual person and the fleshly person because the fleshly person wants to come out and say, this is me. I did it. But really, if you're being honest, light has nothing to do with the bulb. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Absolutely. Because yes, yes. bulbs break, yes. but the power is still running. Mm -hmm. The moment the bulb breaks doesn't mean there's no power. Good. It just means the vessel is in question. So let's not be big on the on the bulb. Let's be big on the light. On the light. Yeah. Let's be big on the mm. light. Let's go, actually. Let's go <laughs> deeper. <laughs> let's go deeper. So uh -huh. you are in your teens. Yes. No, you're in your 20s. Yes. And you are saying, I love God, mm. you know. But how does that help relate with mm -hmm. the environment around mm -hmm. you? Why are you never in a crisis? Because mm -hmm. there are things sometimes we feel like we got to do, you mm -hmm. know. Wait, it's a shot. How does a shot taste mm -hmm. like? Oh, I got to put some lemon. Yes. Okay, this and this. There are things yeah. you want to do, but mm -hmm. at the back of your mind, you're yeah, like, I don't want to wanna do this, mm -hmm. you know. But then you're always conflicted. Should yeah. I? Should I not? Yeah. How did you handle the challenges? And would you say there are <sighs> moments where mm -hmm. you felt like hey, I'm a sinner. Mm. Uh -huh. I, I don't feel like there were moments. I feel like they are moments. Even right now. Even now. now. Even in this moment <laughs> coming here, <laughs> my righteousness has been questioned. But maybe this is a good place to also tell anybody. We glorify um, sin to look like clubbing, sleeping around. But gossip is a sin. Lying is a sin. And in God's eyes, there's no measure of one greater than the other. Jealousy is a sin. Jealousy, envy is a sin. So wh why we glorify one more than the other makes me very uncomfortable. And that's why I say I still sin. Because currently, in my head, there's so much more shine. I want to give my friends. <laughs> but then in my head, I'm like, God, 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 forgive me. Work on me, Jesus. <laughs> because it's, 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 it's a sin. Mm -hmm. It's a sin. It's gossip. Yes. But how did I deal with them? How do I deal with them? It's actually what Paul said. He said, when I want to do good, evil is always near me. 
when I want to, yani my intentions are so pure. I really want to do the best. Yes. But evil is always around me. Who will save me from this thing? Because the truth is, is that that's why we need God every day. Otherwise, we would have gotten God kitambo and we would have never needed him again. <laughs> so every day you find yourself fighting these temptations. And that's why he tells you, you know, like, deliver me from evil. This day, not yesterday's or tomorrow. Now I'm in trouble. Help me now. So I'm just encouraging anybody who's watching is to tell you, you're not wrong because you sin. You're wrong when you're comfortable sinning. Because we all sin. By the way, I tell you, as long as we're in this side of eternity, <laughs> they, they sin everywhere. Mm -hmm. Just our thoughts are sinful. Yeah, so don't be comfortable. Um, don't be so hard on yourself when you sin. Because that's now where you feel like, why bother? But when you're comfortable realizing that I sin and I can still go back to God, that'll help you. So mm -hmm. when I was younger, even because I say it like, well, younger, so that you think I'm 16. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Okay. But age is creeping. Yeah, age is creeping it, on me. Oh no! But, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> but when when you sin, when I when sin has come near me, I will say that there are times when I have given into it, and given into it is submitting to my fleshly self. But I will also say that even in those times, I still felt God. Yeah. And I, th I think it's just to tell anybody, he doesn't move away from you because you're a sinner. Mm. No. Do you feel like you missed out on the world? I feel like the world thinks I, the world thinks I missed out on some things. But looking back. The world missed out on me. The world you. missed out <laughs> on me. <laughs> because at times mm. I think to myself, hey, 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 hey. God, you helped the world. Because this one, I'd have been the worst of them all. But also maybe just to say it earlier is that I grew up in a very Christian home. Yes. Um, my dad, I got saved when I was eight years old. Uh, my dad um, <clears throat> says he dedicated me very young. And I've never left um, the church. In fact, my social circles have always been church-led. So I think the bringing up element is also really good. Mm. Because what people don't understand is also in church circles, you can be social. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to always be, praise the Lord, Sister Lynn, how is the Lord working on you today? Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to be. Yes. It's let's catch up on life. I've, I have one, some of my greatest friends have always been in the church, and I don't think that's a bad thing to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. And it's a beautiful, it place, a beautiful place to be in. It's, yeah. it's such a beautiful mm -hmm. place to be in, you mm -hmm. know. But then, as I was saying, sometimes you 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 think humanly, mm -hmm. God, I'm doing everything. Yeah. I'm being a good girl. Yes. I'm trying. Yes. I'm not comfortable yes. seeing our family is mm. beautiful. And then before you know it, your mom mm -hmm. leaves yeah. you. What are some of the questions mm. that are going through your mind during this time yeah. and how did you handle? First, congratulations. Mm -hmm. One of the events I honestly regret missing out, uh -huh. but I was not around. Uh -huh. I wanted to come, misunderstood you yes. and um, Kambua. Kambua. Yes, when you great. were, I love <coughs> Kambua so, yes. so much. So I really wanted to mm -hmm. be there because mm -hmm. sometimes people think grief mm. is losing. Yeah. There's so many stages and elements of grief, you know, and I felt like a lot of people showed up. Yeah. But before I digress, yeah. number one, mm -hmm. how did you deal mm -hmm. with being in God? Yeah. But then God taking okay. yeah. something that you really treasured. Yeah. Oh, and why mm. do you think a lot of people mm -hmm. connected <clears throat> with you and Kambua yeah. when you had that mm. event? Good. So when I lost my mom, I was 19. And I was in church, and she was also a very staunch believer. She participated a lot in church um, activities and even church building. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think to myself that I am her in a different generation, but yes. that's a story for another yeah. interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next week. Um, what did I do? I remember, I remember her well. In fact, that's when it began. And I, I remember because at the time I was in high school and she'd come from chemo and pass by school and tell me by them from treatment. But I remember something so interesting was that in that time when she was unwell, I don't think I fought with God as much because in my head, he should have healed her. When she transitioned and passed on, I remember she passed on on a Friday. And on Sunday, I was in church. And I think I went to Mavuno at the time, and it was mm -hmm. at Bellevue. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Pastor M who was preaching that Sunday. And I was with so many of my friends, but I remember he said, he was talking about how God is our peace. And why I've never forgotten that message is because I wondered to myself, 
why 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 is this a conversation you're having now i of the many things i thought about god in that moment was not him being peace because i felt like he had caused a lot of chaos in my life because now i'm 19 what <laughs> now is not the time but i remember a few things i had struggles with god at the time i felt like one why did he do it two why her you know and it's not a it's not a good thing to say that in your head you think to yourself there are so many evil people i mean and you know you i and i i really struggled with that thinking because i really fought with god in that time but i fought with him very privately because i didn't want it to become something i vocally say that moves me away from him because if you know nyawi radlin yes i'm radical yeah yeah i can be telling you I can't believe you done that to me, Lynn. I can't yes. believe it. Lynn, I can't believe it. Yes. Lynn, I can't believe it. Throw no. the chairs, run away, and leaves you here. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I remember, I remember the, 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 the amount of times I cried, the amount of times I felt like I had, like God had played me. Like this was not the plan. This was a great place for God to get a testimony, you know? But I felt like he cut it short. And I think, in my opinion, it's a it's it's a power of also seeing it backwards is that it actually was a testimony because i feel like god allowed me to see my life differently because as a as a child and a girl particularly you're so attached to your mom you're attached to a system where you you will see her she'll take care of you you know yes. like she'll nurture you she'll transition you she'll she'll be there on your wedding day she'll be there when you give us your first child she'll be there washing the first child you know those are the things you think about yes. <clears throat> But I remember the conflict I had later is that I didn't have the privilege of like her seeing all the relationships I had been in and out of, mm-hmm. or you know the man I'd end up marrying. I, I and I I don't think God played me. Now I don't. Now I know He didn't play me, but I think He allowed me to see Him differently, because I don't want to say God became my mother, but God allowed me to also see that He could also nurture me, and so it was not easy and anybody who's going through it would understand because only recently is when i became comfortable even saying my mom died yeah and and this is like what almost 11 years later but you you start to think to yourself and you remember and i think god has a strange way of showing you you know i'll help you yeah but i won't heal you tomorrow morning Mm -hmm. yeah so a loss can be a testimony absolutely Absolutely, absolutely. I tell you one of the funniest things, Jesus, we lost him on earth. That's the greatest testimony of our lives. Yeah. Had he not left, something wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And I'm not saying my mother was Jesus before it becomes a cultic <laughs> movement. Because <laughs> everyone is waiting. <laughs> but I'm saying that sometimes we only understand it later. Is that there are things I don't think I'd have seen about God had I not gone through what I went through. Mm-hmm. There are things I now know when someone loses someone. I know what it means like to be there for them. I know what it means like to say the right thing. I know what it means like to just sit with you and be quiet. Because that's what people don't like talking about is that you some of these things you have to be there to understand them. I know that at the time of someone's passing I don't want to hear it is well. <laughs> what are you saying? It is not. It is not well. It is not. Well. It will be, but, but it not is not now. Exactly. And so I know and I think Everything in my life, and I have seen it now, is that I feel like everything I have gone through has been God grooming me for something. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's the loss of my mom, he's allowed me to show care differently to people when they pass on. Um, if it's the, I mean, if it's, if it's being in a family and being the last born, it's knowing also how to be taken care of, you know? Um, if it's being in church, it's knowing how to be in church. And so I now know. I now know what you it now means. Know. Yeah. I love that, mm-hmm. you know. But coming now to yeah. the event, yeah. a lot of people, because mm-hmm. I was just going through your caption mm-hmm. and I remember seeing you saying, it's not even young people no. who came. No. It's like not to say Older. anyone is old, yeah. but <laughs> age. Yeah, age-wise it was. Were you expecting? No. <laughs> no, Lynn. Mm. Let me tell you, Lynn. Mm. You know me, I'm a control freak. Yes. So at the event where I had that, <laughs> I could see everybody as they were walking in. As they were walking in, I looked at the people coming in. In fact, I asked one of my friends, please go ask them if they're coming for the right event. Because it was ladies who were way older. Even some men came. So they said, yeah, yeah, we come for this thing. So when I sat there, I'm nervous because it's my first conversation. 
I'm also nervous because Kambo is a lady who has really been in my story. One of these days I'll talk about her yeah. in full light. Plus but it's I respect her. Exactly. So I'm thinking to myself, this is a lady who's honored my invitation. She had never spoken about her grief yes. journey before. Yes. And when she said yes, I was like, oh, now I have to do this thing. After that, I'm seeing the caliber of women who had come. It amazed me. Because that's now when I almost, I'd like to say God God told me, you know, the heavens opened. But I actually felt like God was actually telling me that healing is not a respect of age. You could be 70 years old, but you never mourned someone who died mm -hmm. at three, when you were three. If you never healed, you never healed. Yeah. So, and, and God doesn't select and say, now at the age of 20, let's all suffer loss. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. The mm -hmm. people who lost someone when they were four, mm -hmm. others when they are 50, others when they are 60, <clears throat> but the loss is still, it still yeah. cuts deep. So that really spoke to me in terms of healing. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's beautiful because, mm. man, it was a beautiful. And you looked it really baby. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> but why, why, why call the event mm -hmm. miss? And mm. I want to know, are you misunderstood? <laughs> 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 is it miss ms understood why yes, yes. so misunderstood <clears throat> is just a funny word play that i usually pat myself on the shoulders mm. for because it's a conversation starter mm -hmm. but misunderstood is actually like what i will be is understood so it's miss ms dot understood yes whether you listen to me talking about whatever you will understand it mm -hmm. so that's what it is so yeah. the goal was just to give understanding to different things and seasons in life um, for that gathering, we were understanding grief. And unfortunately, some of these things you only understand through stories. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. And when Kambo was sharing her story, she opened my eyes to understand grief in a whole different way. How tangible it can be. That it, it destabilizes a person. Mm -hmm. When we listened to the audience, because it was so interesting to hear what people were saying about grief and what they had lost and the friends they had lost or the children they had lost. You sit there and you ask yourself, wow, even I don't understand this level of pain, but you get to understand it. And so that's why it, it's always been about giving understanding to something. Mm. So whether it's understanding grief, whether it's understanding age, whether it's understanding perspective, whether it's understanding when the heart hurts, when the heart hurts whether it's understanding I, I mean, name it. We can give understanding to mm, it. So that's good, why misunderstood exists. Good job. But yeah. I feel like it's a healing place. That's for my, so that's, many. that's what I feel like God has allowed me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now looking back, mm -hmm. this is the part. Yeah. You are able to do this mm -hmm. by yourself, mm -hmm. but you always craved mm -hmm. having to do this for other people. Yeah. At what point do we get to a place? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start from scratch, mm -hmm. no matter how it breaks me. Mm -hmm. At what point do you give up on the thought, someone has to see me, mm -hmm. I have to see myself? Mm -hmm. That's such a good question. Every conversation I have, mm -hmm. many a times, I don't mm -hmm. allow myself to have any conversation if I have not gone through it. Other than that, it will just be vibes and quotes. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. So with that in mind, I'm very selective on all to the conversations I have. Um, grief, for obvious reasons, was about my mom. Um, whether it was uh, um, Dear Younger Me with Wanjiro, it was because we were both turning 30. Yeah. Whether it was about ending it right, it's because I like perspective when I'm starting a new year. Whether it was about when the heart hurts, it's because I've been dumped. And dumped chronically. You know, dumped like chewing gum. Have you you've been dumped? Yes. You yes. Have you dumped? I have dumped. Oh okay. I have dumped. So we've dumped. I have. There's a balance. Been... <laughs> There's a balance in this life. <laughs> but I've been dumped, yes. you know? And that's why because I I don't understand pain that I can't relate with. And I think that's why I love Jesus, is that I mean they say he went through everything. And that's why he could do everything. So I, I pray that everybody who comes to my event, one of my biggest desires is that you leave there healed mm. or like with the intention of healing. So nothing meaningless. Yeah, mm. good. But how do you get to say, because mm -hmm. sometimes I feel especially people in the media space, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. always a struggle. Mm -hmm. And I see, I clap for everyone I see starting a podcast. Mm -hmm. Even if they have 10 views, <laughs> I'm gonna like it. Yes. I'll just help because the struggle mm -hmm. is, you know, you have it in you, mm. you know. But I was talking to Il Broda the other time, yes. and she said something important. Sometimes we don't understand real number two 
is also important. You gotta do the big things Ooh. in that role you deem yeah. small, yeah. right? So a lot of people in the media space will mm. struggle because everyone wants to start something. For, I, I'm become good at the thing. <laughs> become the thing. Yes. So what do we do before mm -hmm. we become the thing? Mm. What are some of the things we need to watch out for so that by the time this opportunity yeah. comes, yeah. we've done the necessary yeah. preparation? Yeah. The, the quote on number two is so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, uh, yes. yo, I we shall use it. I shall use it. I shall use it. I shall use it. The preparation is so important. Mm. So two things are very important when you're in your season of preparation. You must learn yourself. Learning yourself is not learning your strengths. It's actually learning your weaknesses. What now? Absolutely. Say what? Everybody knows your strength, Lynn. Everybody knows you're a great speaker. Everybody knows you're a great storyteller. Everybody knows you bring it out. But what makes Lynn weak? That's where Lynn will fail. If I don't learn my weaknesses, I'm not preparing myself. Wow. Because that means in my time of glory, I know what will fail me. I know it. So in different circles, it's called different things, but I call it managing your appetites. Because they always show up. Even when you're not hungry, you still want to eat it. Because I'll, I'll just be, I don't know that you're like me, if I'm in the house. Randomly too, I just feel like, eh! But there are biscuits, that they're ah, messy, they're talking to anybody. Oh my God. They're the one who looks like, because I, I do that. I'm the worst eater. Me, I but do. But I will nibble on anything. Even when I, when I see there's food there, but there are biscuits. Why are we talking about food? Let's go to this thing. Yes. If I don't manage my appetite in my preparation season, they will consume me. And managing your appetites lean is the hardest thing ever because you need to know that they are there. The f I mean, for different people, like people lose appetite is money. So you'll have a great story to tell somebody. Yes. But if they don't pay me, I won't do it. So your appetite has consumed you already. And it's so dangerous because for me, my appetite has always been affirmation. If people don't affirm me, I feel like I'm not doing the right thing. Whoa. So I know what my weakness is. So many a times I would find myself, I've done something and I'd go and tell someone, okay, so what, what did you like? Yeah. And later, only recently, they realize I don't need you to like something. I've done what I was told to do. Wow. So if I don't know my, and so what happens with that is I'll start doing foolish things that I'm affirmed. Yeah. So preparation is managing your appetite. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what they are, sit down with yourself. You know where, you know where the shoe pinches us. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Lynn, you're so put together. We don't know that. Maybe I don't Until know what I yours see. is. Yes. Exactly. But, we, we, but you know it. I know and it. you can always see it coming. And so what you need to do is once you know what it is, get somebody who you can tell, someone you can trust. Yes. Because you tell the wrong person, they will use it against you. Mm -hmm. But you tell the right person, they hold you accountable. That Nyawira, you're going to speak at this place. If they don't affirm you, leave the room. Go to the car, go home. Because if you're waiting for them to, if they don't, you'll feel like you've given a bad thing. Mm. So move quickly. So be accountable to somebody. Okay. The other thing in preparation is master your craft. Master it. Master it completely. Um, I had the privilege of speaking younger. But I've also learned that speaking younger and when you're older, you can't sound the same. So what am I consuming? Am I reading? Am I, am, I, am I acquiring information in the space that I need to be heard? Because there's nothing worse than an adult going to speak in front of people and you sound like a child. We'll be there saying, eh, mm. eh, age has taught this one nothing, Not you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so master your crap. Learn something in your area of expertise. But then also is define success at your own level. For me, maybe success is saying, I spoke to a thousand people and three of them transformed. Mm -hmm. That's how I measure success. But maybe if you, if you don't measure success, everybody else defines it. Yes. So everybody will say, Lynn, but you're making so much money. Why don't you think you're a success? Because you don't know it, that becomes a measure of success. Yeah. That money has come, I'm a success. Um, people know my name, I'm a success. That's not the objective. That's not how I measure success. If you don't define success before it comes, anything that comes will look like success. So define it before it comes. When I sat down with Misunderstood, my measure of success was to gather people 
and to have them have a space where they can talk about anything and be healed. If that doesn't happen, I know I haven't succeeded. So many guys are like, hey, you become something. I'm like, and I'm happy. Yes. But have people gathered? Have people been healed? If that hasn't happened, I'm not a success. Even if it's three people. Even if it's one. Did, did <laughs> love that. Even if it's one. Did this person leave exactly. this Exactly. Have I transformed you? Or did you just like how I sounded? Yeah. Because how many people do we listen to Lean that sounds so great? So many. Yeah. So many. But if they don't transform you, it's just good vibes. Mm -hmm. I don't want good vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. True story. Yeah. So define success yeah. before it comes. Good. But then also be aware of who gave you the success. Beautiful. Let me tell you. Beautiful. The illusion is that anybody can make you a thing. Lynn, you could easily tell people on the camera right now, oh my gosh, I'm a big deal because all these people are subscribing to me. Almost a million. Uh -huh. Oh, the people love me. Nah, me I'm a big deal. God <laughs> I'm loves a big deal. me. God I'm loves me. I'm a, I'm a stop deal. it at God. Yeah. I'm a stop it at God. But if you yes. don't recognize that you're only here and you're only going so. far, uh, and then, then now, because you, creation always satisfies its creator. If, if you think the people have made you or the people have created Lynn, then you'll satisfy the people. Yes. So you do very strange interviews. You're watching, like, hey, Lynn, what are we watching here? <laughs> oh, this? my, wait a what minute. What is that sense? Yeah. Can people attack to I cry? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, Lynn, Lynn. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've never done this pose <laughs> on the show like that. No. <laughs> because in your, head, in your head, exactly in your head, you're like the people want to see this, but really, Lynn, you know your equipping isn't by them. Yes. So realize who created this success, and if it's the people, satisfy them. Mm. If it's not them, satisfy the one. Who Good. Has. Yeah. But has success ever gotten to you? It's not. Lynn, I'm not a successful. Who is sweetheart when you know you ah, know. Bye, guys. <laughs> God knows my heart. God no, knows my heart. No, 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 when no, how? No, 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 no. So what we don't do, we don't shrink, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> because these things have been given to us by God. Yeah. So when we we make Him proud, mm -hmm. we gotta say, I, I we did, did good, well. Father. Yeah. So you've done good. Yeah. Maybe that's not how you measure good, success, good, you know, good, and good. that's okay. Yeah. But I I just feel like you've done yeah. well. Yeah. But has that thought yeah. ever gotten to you? It hasn't gotten to me. Yes. God has that. I told you God has a sense of humor. It's a balancing mm -hmm. act. One time. It's a balancing act. It's a act. balancing <laughs> act. One time, I was like, wow. I had, I was walking in town. And these two girls shouted, oh my God, misunderstood. So I was like, wow. They you know me. <laughs> they know me. They know me off the camera. The next day, as I told you, God is about balance. Okay, that will a place. We packed um, in town. And I was with my husband. From the parking lot to where we were going, Boy. every two steps was guy, shot baba, shot baba, shot baba. So I said to myself, Happy <laughs> Actually, it was so funny because they were like, I don't want to pick a picture. I think I said, to pick a picture. <laughs> I found it so funny. But that's the day I knew it can't get to my head. I said to myself, what were really? Shalini Yamira, if we counted how many people stopped my husband, I am so far from what people would deem a success. So it can't get to my head. I told you God has a balancing act. Yes. Because for every time I feel like, wow, I'm doing so well. Yeah. You'll always be brought back to the reality that you're still far from where you need to be. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> it can't get to my head. It can't, it can't get oh, to my head. And I pray that it doesn't. Yeah. Because how I, what I intentionally do for it never to get to my head yes, yes. is that I don't allow myself to think that I'm deserving of only some species. Beautiful. So if people, if someone wants me to come and speak at an event that has like 4,000 people, I'll be so happy. I'll even cry as I'm on my way there. But if someone wants me to come for an event that has only like 10 people, they don't even have a mic, I will still show up in the same magnitude. Wow. If I did my hair and my makeup and I got a new outfit, I will do the same thing for this one. Why? Because I will not let any space define the fact that you've honored me and you want me there. So what I do with it is that I refuse myself from thinking that I am made for some spaces only. Yeah, I, I'll never be big enough for a certain space or small enough for a certain space. If God that. sends me somewhere, I just show up. I do what I need to do. If it blesses you, great. 
because also lean and that's why i wanted to talk about kamboa yes she took a huge risk that was my first gathering ever i had never done a physical event as near with her but when i told kamboa on dm on instagram i'm thinking about doing this thing and i'd love you to my first guest and she said yes we are yes and we met and we talked about the event and what we want to talk about and we went through it but she said yes to me when nobody else would be willing to because before her i had reached out to so many people and nobody was responding and so she becomes an indicator for me i mean kamboa is kamboa let's not talk about her like she's like a small girl yes. i don't deserve for her to be on any space that i'm on but for her to believe in me and say yes it made me realize how stupid would i be to say no to you because you're starting you never know where things go mm. so i always pay her her homage i think i'm going to talk about i, I want to cry cuz yes. she's, she's just been in my dms oh. you know she will see something good yes. she's there at the end i love you kambo yes. she knows you know like she's she's that she's, she's sweet so she's the typical definition of a girl's girl completely she like completely that's if, the right word a girl's girl mm, mm. take your flowers take mama. your flowers yes, take, take, them. take your <laughs> like we are so we are yeah. privileged or to be honest yeah, and i mean her. she has done this for many yeah she has hey kambua is a key <clears throat> study yeah if mm. we were to ever have like a walk of of fame i think she should be Hanim, the first panim hasta yeah. But she she knows she's already a star. She is, you see what I did there? Yeah, hala. And the layer could load up for it for. Hey, lead. She knows she's a star. Yeah, too cool. Okay, yeah, but too cool. yeah, now uh-huh. my, my people knew this part is coming uh-huh. cuz how can we not? Yes. Uh, you spoke about being dumped. Yes. And dumping. Yes. Now. <laughs> so where do broken hearts go? <laughs> <laughs> Grabs tissue. <laughs> Oh, hey, lean, 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 hey. lean. And what was your oh. perception of relationships, you know, Ooh. back then? First, I had never been dumped. Hey. I need to make you understand why this story makes me laugh every time I think about it now. <laughs> I used to be the girl who always dumped because I used to feel like I had variety and I had options and I didn't want this and I did What? But what does the Lord do to people balancing? It? <laughs> you shall be humbled, you small girl, <laughs> thinking that you don't look and hurt people. <laughs> so I was in this relationship for maybe two going one going two years and i i liked the guy i think mm. he was uh he's a he's a he's a good man yes i mean i can't taint him i can't speak ill of him he's a great guy um not my guy yes. but a great guy okay and that's a big lesson ladies don't Nime, be in a hurry uh, to make everybody the devil <laughs> but ni me mark uh-huh, but uh-huh. he's a great guy not but my not my guy guy yes i'm coming yes. Go yes so this guy we were i mean we dated and mm. It was an interesting relationship because I really I I mean when you're a girl and you're in love because me I'm a lover I love love I love being loved I love being given love I love showing love I love love But the relationship for its own reasons was just a funny one we were fighting all the time and leading to it you know when a girl fights in your head you think he should come back and you know like guy please don't don't be sad don't be yes. sad talk to me <laughs> jokes on me he talked to me and he said hey by the way it's not working <laughs> oh my god. I went back to my bedroom. So he came in and I mean he was honorable. He didn't even run a text. He told me to my face. And I said, "Eh, okay, first I appreciate the confidence." <laughs> But I went back to my room and in my head I said, hmm? "What did he say?" And because we are all females, we can all see it is that in my head I was willing for us to get back together so that I can dump him now. Good. Who gets who the power? You who do you think you're dumping? Like who are you? Like honestly, <laughs> he closed it. Look at big bad lock. The one that shines and when you open bad lock, can even sound like an alarm. He locked it that way. So we <laughs> we we tried getting back. I mean, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. He, didn't was, work. Done. he was done and done and done. Because also I must say because people don't listen to this part of the story. They don't listen to being dumb. Yes. But I also was a very nasty person in that relationship. And I played my part also in this ending. So it's not that he was the devil. I was also not the best. Mm. Cuz the devil also needs to have a nice place to play around. Thank you for knowing that. Yes. You yes. could be the problem. Yes. Yeah, said it. So he dumped me <laughs> and I had chronic denial for a long time. In fact, what's chronic denial? Chronic denial is so, where Nawera, it's cl- you, you uh-huh. know you are like MC copy big <laughs> words. So here we got a need get to like <laughs> so you can't just say chronic denial <laughs> and then after we move on so your lungs were on fire. My lungs were on fire. 
my tear glands were releasing <laughs> on extreme. I was just crying. You know that? You just, you're talking to someone, hey, I'm crying for no reason. <laughs> and it was so bad because I felt so downcast. I remember that season was so painful because I, I didn't even want to see people. I was like, ah, forget it. I don't want. Some of my friends actually got married in that season. And I was like, I don't want to be at a wedding. And because I told you, Nyaveda is very, very dramatic. Radical. I went radical was the word I used. <laughs> I went to my pastor and told my pastor, hey, Pasi, me, I don't think God has told me to be married. I think me and Paul took a sin. He's Paul? Paul in the Bible. Oh. Okay. That we are not, we're oh, not together. Sorry, we're not together. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I told my pastor just burst out in laughter. And he was like, Nyaveda, stop it. <laughs> stop it now. Just, you're going through pain. It's okay. Take your time. When you're ready to come back, we shall eh, find a way eh, around it. Eh. I took my time. It was a very funny, very funny season. Because what people don't know me tell you is that as girls, we think it's done. But now we linger around the guy just to see, okay, has he moved on? Nah, how can is he, he the new girlfriend? without me? Yeah. What is, he, what is he doing? How is he posting a picture of him smiling? <laughs> he should be crying like me. He should be sad. He should be getting skinny. <laughs> you should be what? Your life should be ending. <gasps> But the brother was thriving. Um, I think a month later, I got wind that he was in another relationship. I said, guy, God, was I the problem? Was it me? Yes. And I remember I was so, so hurt. Because what also we don't tell people is that us as women, many a times, we put ourselves in the place of hurt me again. Because now I'm looking for information that will allow me to be hurt more. Yes. Oh. Hey, it was so bad. Mm. It was so bad. It was so bad. I remember that season so clearly. God with his sense of humor. In that time, so Moji and I had been friends for a long time. We've been friends forever and a day. Okay. But because of church, we were serving a lot together. So after like Bible study, he dropped me home, gone with his life. In fact, when we were, when I was dating now, my heartbreaker, Mommy. he, <laughs> he, <laughs> Oh, I love you, Lee. Just don't misunderstand <laughs> me. Don't listen. I won't misunderstand you. So when, when we were dating, when I was dating, Moji even used to drop me at dates with this guy. Because we were friends. He was my, my brother in Christ. Did I find my family? <laughs> Wait, Moji. I found my brother in Christ. My brother in Christ became my husband. Ah, Moji was Minute crazy. 56. <laughs> Can you so what happened that was so funny was he like we were like we were friends completely for hey Moji, this guy is we're fighting about with you. What do you think? And Moji is very wise. And he'd give me counsel. Because I was his friend. I was his friend. I was his friend. So Naira has now been dumb. Yes. But Moji is still my friend. So we went for Bible study, he dropped me home. One time we said, ah, it's like 8 p.m. Why don't we enter? So we used to sit around Valley Why yes. don't we enter the galitos over there and just have something to eat? So I was like, ah, why not? So we went. We were eating. We were eating. We were eating. So I said, baby, let me go and buy a drink. So I went to buy soda at the cash shop there. Yes. <laughs> Who do I see in the line? My heartbreaker. Kai. Who am I looking at this other table with? I'm with Moji. So I said, oh, God. What's going on here? What's going on here? The hour has come. <laughs> Nyawira, behave yourself. You worked so hard for this moment. Behave yourself. Behave healing, yourself. Healing. Be healed. So I said, oh, hi, how are you doing? And I said, hi. I paid for my drink. I was like, oh, nice to see you. And I went to my table. I told Moji we were high-fiving. Because I was saying to myself, who have I become? That was a great moment to be so dramatic. But I didn't. Because healing changes your approach to pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> so, I, I mean, mm-hmm. long and short is that after that, Moji and I became very close as friends. And So why is Moji high-fiving? Because he's place? my friend. Because I had already vented to him about how I, if I see this guy one day, I'll finish him. You know, Because women are toxic. I was going <laughs> to kill him. I'm going to finish this man. Me, no one can dump me. I shall finish your life. I shall I change your story. I'm undumpable. <gasps> So for him, for me to tell him, I just said hi, was mm. a win. Okay. Was a win. Mm. Was a win, Lynn. I see where you're going. <laughs> no, it's not. A, was a win. You know me, I love Moji. Like, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so what happened with Moji is that, um, what, a year later? <laughs> a year later, uh, we, were, the we were girlfriend uh, and boyfriend. A year later? Oh, a year okay, later. That was, okay, that took time. Two years later. Ah, because me, I could we be high-fiving, <laughs> like, God, thank you for clearing the way. Like, me, m- m- no emoji. Like, maybe that's what he was about. Like, God. It's my Santi time. Bro. It's my time, ah, God. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
but I'm just saying disclaimer, yeah. guys. Disclaimer. Those are my thoughts <laughs> in a person, I'm a lawyer. But you know, <laughs> thinking about it. Yes. So, so this this something you said. Mm. Someone, Mamoji to me, we are yes. coming to Moji. Yes. Someone can be the right guy, mm -hmm. but not your. your guy. How do you know that as a woman? You may be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> As I have learned, <laughs> in, in heal. but you, it's a lesson also, it's a lesson yes. model. But also you need to know what you need mm. to know about a guy. Um, I think before Moji, not even before Moji, when I was dating this guy, why I thought he was my guy was because he said yes to me. Yeah, in my head, him saying yes meant he was mine. It's not doesn't work that way at all, at all. Because I think God also, because of free will, he allows you sometimes to be in situations where you're like, mm, this isn't the right thing to do. And sometimes God will tell you this is not the right thing to do. But because we feel with our heart and not with our spirit, you shall run to this man and you'll be in a relationship with him and you feel like this is the guy, but he's not the guy. So how do you know he's your guy? I think God tells you he is your guy. Mm -hmm. There's a peace that comes when he is your guy. There's no internal conflict when he is your guy. Yeah. yeah. There's no internal conflict. Nothing. You're, uh, Yanni, you know this is my person. We're not fighting about it. I don't need to be around him every second. He's my person. Mm. So. so you don't say, Nandiliski, a voice. Imagine. You see how uh, we do after that? we get heartbroken. Yeah. Now, wait, a, a voice was telling me. My <laughs> yes. gut feeling <laughs> yes. from the word go was yes. telling me this guy is not the right guy. No. Now, let's stop with the gut feeling. Absolutely. When there's no internal conflict, he's your guy. He's your guy. He's your guy. So, <laughs> how did you know Moji was your guy? <laughs> <laughs> I knew Moji was my guy. Mm. One, because he was first my very good friend. Wow. I say this all the time, in his presence and in his absence, I enjoy spending time with Moji, my friend. And when people find us in that environment, you'd think, are you guys okay? Because we enjoy each other's company. Our most cherished moments have been driving for a long time and just telling each other stories the whole time with no music playing in the car. So I knew he was my guy when I felt the comfort of him being my friend. I knew he was my guy when I, I observed his values. Moji is a good man. Beautiful. And I say good because he has been in spaces where, I mean, he, in his family space, he is honorable. And he's honored in his workspace he's honorable and he's also honored and even as a husband i honor him because he's also honorable so why he's my guy is i don't think god would have me with anyone else the person i've become today that people celebrate so loudly had been oppressed for a long time but i have found him bringing out that person in me every given opportunity People don't see it because we don't capture it often. It's yes. that all these events that we do, Moji is either putting out a fire, wiring a camera, <laughs> or making noise that the video is not being done the way it needs to be done. I don't think God would make a mistake when I think about him. So mm. he's my person completely. And good. Mm -hmm. And you are his person. God. And it's beautiful. When he comes for that interview, you cut this part, you make him watch it. If he doesn't cry, stop the interview. That's a joke. Good. I end the home. I end Imagine the home. <laughs> at, uh, me, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. Yes. I got you. Like you. Kabua style. Yes. You get it? Yes. You know. Yeah. But w what's this thing he did as a man? Mm -hmm. You said you'd been oppressed for yeah. a long time. Yeah. But then he comes mm -hmm. and affirms you. Yeah. Is that where he w you were like, yes. this is it. Let me tell you, we were friends a long time ago. So many, yeah. because if you're my friend, you know I open up a lot to you about what I'm feeling or why I'm feeling mm -hmm. the way I am. Mm -hmm. A lot of the rejection I got, Moji was aware of. And when we began dating, actually, some of the cards, because you know, as a, as a, as a serial terrorist girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> you demand that every month you're told happy anniversary. <laughs> so <laughs> every month he'd get me a card and in the card, he'd write very, very funny messages. He has a, the worst handwriting. So when he, one of the cards I found the other day as I was cleaning my things, he wrote to me and said, I pray one day the world gets to see what I know you really are. Wow. And as I was cleaning, that day by day, I think I'll call Mary Bo. But that message alone made me feel like 
his intentions are so pure about me. Mm. Yeah. So how he has brought out that person in me is that not just even affirmation. He reminds me a lot of who I am. Yeah. Um, who I am. Completely. Long post. <laughs> Long post a, a lot. lot. Yes. Who am I? Oh. Nyawira, mm. who are you? And why did that part uh -huh. have to be here for all of us? Guys, it's showing on your screen. Please yeah. make sure this is this is actually yes. it. It's on your screen. It is well, just not now. Yeah. Who am I? Is a question first I ask myself a lot of times. Um, if I'm being honest and vulnerable, when I got the call for this interview, I asked who am I to be here. And because in my, when I began looking at the people you've talked to, I was like, ah, no, you're joking, God. What? what? Lee? Oh. But <laughs> I ask myself that question many a times because of a few reasons. Who am I can be defined by so many things. Who am I can be defined by I'm Moji's wife. I'm a wife. I speak. I am. Speak. Those are things I do. That's not who I am. So who I who am I? And that why that devotional was so close to my heart was because I realized I I had become so caught up with the definitions of what everybody said I was and not who I really was as a person. Yeah. So who am I? And that's why the devotional is so important. Is that it starts with I am chosen. I am loved, and all those things are defined by what God has said. So I, I don't speak about myself like, you know, I am I'm the greatest of my time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because if he hasn't said it about me, I'm not going to take it. So if God hasn't said that, you know, Nyawira, um, if God hasn't said you're not loved, why would I take it? If God has not said you're not enough, why am I taking it? Mm. So if he has told me I am enough, if he has told me I am loved, if he's told me I am chosen, he's told me I have assigned you something. If nothing, if those are not what, if mm -hmm. anybody says otherwise, I don't believe it. Mm. That's not who I am. That's not who you are. Mm. But where, can people get this summer? Absolutely. It, it's on, on my social media, there's okay. a page called the Misunderstood Community. Mm -hmm. You reach they, out, they'll get it to me. They'll get it. Mm. Eh? But, but back to Moji. Yeah. You said <clears throat> when you were cleaning, alikuwa yeah. mekubo yosi. <laughs> So which means Muna Boya? Ah, completely. Marriage is marriage. <laughs> Do you start a seminar? Do you have time? Do you have time? Yes, yes. <laughs> people don't believe it. But people think <clears throat> marriage is waking up every day and loving the person and mm. feeling like you're the one for me. Then that's the day you wake up in the morning and you're so angry because of something he said or something he did. And you laugh at yourself because you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not feeling you, but you, you're my person. Yes. I'm not feeling you, but I've chosen to feel you today. So that's what I feel marriage is. Uh -huh. And people don't like saying it. Everybody thinks marriage is so rosy and, and lovey-dovey. And it should be every day, ideally. But lovey-dovey is not spelt kissing and hugging every two minutes. Lovey-dovey has meant that we are mature now. Let's talk about what we're feeling. So, so you sit down now Now we do. Unambia. Because the Lord has worked on me. Oh, yeah. The Lord has worked on me. Two years later, <laughs> there'll be another long post. <laughs> now that we're married. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I have now that we are now married. Now that we are married, long let's talk life. about it. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Oh. You know, mm. but how is marriage life though? It's the best thing ever. I recommend it highly. I recommend it publicly because it becomes a place God also tells you a lot about yourself through someone else. Mm. Yeah. Um, marriage also is a great place because you're supported always by one, if no one else. <laughs> Wow. I'll always know that I have someone in my corner. Yeah. At the end of a very long and tiresome day, this is the person I'm going to tell what's happened. Mm. So you always have someone. Yeah. And yeah, marriage is a marriage is a great thing. And he'll be there listening. He'll be there, he'll be there listening. He'll mm. be there laughing. He'll be there telling you there you are silly. <laughs> or there you really did a good <laughs> thing. Holy <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> But I mean, that's a beauty of marriage. Yes. Yeah, it's a great institution. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I let you go mm -hmm. without asking mm -hmm. for your definition of submission in mm -hmm. your marriage and leadership, yeah, could you walk us through that? Oh my god, this stick is so deep. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so.
so I want to use, you know, the typical cliche of, you know, submission. The prefix is sub means it's under something and mission is that he should have a mission. But I've realized those things are easier to say when you're not the one in it. Submission. So our marriage is interesting because both Moji and I are called in very different areas. Moji is strong in the entertainment scene and I am in a very different scene. It's entertainment, but not necessarily his type of yes, entertainment. Yes. Submission for me is knowing that I can lead in my space. But when my husband comes into my space, he can lead it and I can listen to him. He can tell me what to do. Um, he can tell me what to do doesn't mean he'll put a leash around my neck and make me feel like a dog. Because submission is subject to a very secure man. Yes. If you're, you're an insecure man and you demand for submission, it may come off as oppression because I want you to be under me so that I'm above you at all times. But how I've seen submission in our marriage is that my husband has never made me feel small. In fact, he makes me feel very great in my area. And for me to accept that greatness is because I have allowed him in and he has taken lead. Now, leadership in marriage is a great thing because I am under my husband. Now I know this part is going to be cut and it's going to be used for guy, these submissive women, where are they? Oh my God, an oppressed woman a lot. No, I'm not. <laughs> in any way <laughs> or measure. <laughs> I am not in any way or measure oppressed. I, if, I, if our marriage was an organization, for example, he gives the direction. I follow what he does. Now, following what he does doesn't mean I'm waiting for him to fail. No, it means that he allows my opinion in. He allows also for us to reason together and yes. see where best to take the marriage. So submission for me looks like allowing him to tell me, allowing him to speak into me. Mm. And this is why submission, in my opinion, is only contextual in Christian marriages. Because if you're not, because the Bible doesn't just talk about submission as a wife, it talks, submit one another in Christ. And so my husband must be submitted to God. And maybe it's a great place to tell any lady, if you're looking for a man, if he has no level of submission to anything, that's a red flag. Because how can he define it? He's going to come and tell you to do <laughs> You know, he'll think that cooking, dishes, cooking food and washing dishes is submission. Yes. Those are activities. Come on. <laughs> are we going to stay hungry? So you can cook also. Let's go cook together, you know? Yes. But that's not what submission is. Submission is, a, is actually a poster and a character trait. Because you get to when you're married in the right situation. Because like now for Moji, Moji is, I, as you can clearly tell, I'm the stronger, I'm a very strong personality. And it's very funny because my husband is a very calm spirit. He could be sitting here and just looking at me and thinking, Kai, oh. Akakastana, surely. But that doesn't make him less of a leader. In fact, leading from that place of calmness brings me down a lot of times when I'm uko in the clouds. Mm. So submission for me looks like Moji hearing from God and what he hears from God, he tells me. And what he tells me, I can easily obey because I know where it has also come from. Cool. You know, we don't talk about it much because we like to talk about Mary, mother of Jesus, as you know, the savior of all mankind. She was carrying blessed to share amongst all women. But even God has an order. Is that when he now got, when Joseph now got the dream, God stopped talking to Mary. He actually began talking to Joseph. When they were walking around, it's a balancing act. It's a balancing I act. A, <laughs> yes. So if if, Wait, if it what? Yes, it's it's yes. in the scripture. It is in the scripture because, and that's how. I, and I'm not saying that God doesn't talk to me. Yes. He does. Yes. But because I am submitted to my husband, God will give him direction for our marriage. So I can't direct the marriage. I play my role, but I can't direct it. It's a. It's not a conventional truth for many people. Yes. And the people who are thinking this chick is, you know, she's taking us back to the 1950s. We've come so far as women. But what they don't understand is me doing well is also propelling the marriage. Yeah, because if I do well, it makes his, light, his weight lighter. Because he doesn't have to do everything every time. Yeah, I mean, yes. it's a, it's, our goal is for the marriage to do well. So we play our roles you well. You have a goal. I have a goal. We are that goal. this marriage is going to see yes. next year.
year, not a hundred years mm. yet. Next year we'll be saying we're three years. Yes. Next year we'll be saying we're five years. That's mm. that's our goal. And what does that look like? It looks like us being in a relationship together to make this thing work. So beautiful. I think for any woman out there, if you are in a relationship that is a marriage particularly, I actually think when you're in a marriage only, <laughs> um, submission looks like one, a secure man, two, a man who understands that he needs to submit to God. Mm. If he can't submit to God, I know what your fights will be. I can tell you almost with my eyes closed and mm. I won't be a prophet. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I can tell. Okay. It'll be that you're not listening to me. Yeah, when I said something, why did you talk back at me? Yeah. Dictatorial. Be dictatorial, that's mm. the word. Because mm. you, you feel like your voice is powerful and must always be heard. I'm the final saying this hope when my feet are down, nobody talk to me. Yes. Come, come on, on, come now. down. <laughs> come down, come down, yes. come down. Come down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be be secure, be secure be as a man. I love yeah. submit to someone who is submitting to something. Exactly. How can he tell you to submit he if doesn't he doesn't know, it. know he how doesn't it feels know. like? And I don't think, also I think a great relationship doesn't demand for him to tell you to submit. Naturally. I get in line. I don't think I've had a conversation with my husband where he says, woman, you need to submit to me. Ah! Tomorrow, submit like this. <laughs> I think if he ever says it, I'll just start laughing and high-fiving. Like, hey, you need to say my Because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to feel that way. It's an honor to submit to my husband. Because I know what that means for me. When I submit to Moji, oh, there's so much freedom. Because yes. I'm not fighting about the strangest of things. I know that God has told him, by then, next year, <laughs> we may need to move from where we are staying. Mm. If that's what you feel, my husband, let's, let's go. go. Let's and go. I'll go. Yes. If, the, if it doesn't work there, it's not because he's a bad man. It's not because, now see, you see, you should have asked me first. <laughs> no, no, no. <sighs> but submitting to him is also allowing myself to believe even more in God. Because when I talk to God about my husband, I tell him, like, God, keep telling him things about us. So that we know where we are going. <laughs> okay, but you're peer God. <laughs> 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 Tell him now. Tell him now. <laughs> no. If he doesn't buy me a Range Rover. It's still good. He's still my husband. Exactly. Exactly. That's beautiful. Mm. Goodness. But hey, I think <laughs> yes. that, that's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, you are great conversation. It's, 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 you have it in you. Like, Thank you, Lee. You are such an amazing conversationist. You are powerhouse. You know, if you, you tell yourself that, you yeah. might need to. So when you hear. I'm gonna, cutting this part. It's going to be on my, <laughs> on my thumbnail. <laughs> if anybody ever tells me, hey, you didn't do a good job. So watch your video. Watch yes, your video. Lina, listen, listen, listen. Uh -huh. Even me, uh, Amy was here and Amy Kosge said, oh, lean, nini, nini. Nini. I said, I'm cutting. If yes. someone never tells me anything. I don't want Amy Kosge said. Kosge said so, so. <laughs> are, we, are we good now? Like Amy Kosge. But it, it's nice, you know. Oh. It's nice to exist in your most authentic self. I, I like love that. when I see young marriages that yeah. are thriving. But would I say it pains me also to mm -hmm. see so many breaking. Yeah, like it, it breaks me my too. heart. Because the too. moment we are done with the union, the moment like the devil is just gonna cry absolutely because he absolutely. loves attacking mm. you know the union of marriage. He loves so when I see those that are thriving, I wanna ask people to just learn few yeah. two or three things yeah. from you. What would they oh be? My gosh. One, God has kept us. Yes. There's nothing we do at in the morning facing the different direction of the window and tell God keep our marriage, keep our marriage. Mm -hmm. No, God has just kept. Um, and it's grace. We there's I mean oh, we're not better than because when we've not broken up, mm -hmm. you know. But um Three things that have really helped our marriage so far. And I feel like I'm such a novice to speak about this. Because people who are watching this might be like 50 years in marriage saying, ah, ha, 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 look at this young girl. Oh, but look at me. The first thing is foster the friendship. And foster it genuinely. Enjoy time where the role of husband and wife don't have to exist in that moment. Where we can just sit and have a good laugh. Um, we can send each other memes. Or we can send each other funny things we've seen. <laughs> I mean, just be yes. friends. The second thing is be open. 
um, open about everything. Open about finances, for sure. The abundance and the lack. Mm. Be open also about uncomfortable situations. Lean, um, just because I wear my wedding ring doesn't mean men don't hit on me. Yes. And even when they do, the first person I call is my husband. Because I don't want it to ever look like he doesn't need to know. Because he needs to know what's happening. He needs to know that this is happening. And when I tell him, I need him to also feel like this. Need open up to him is me fostering trust. He's never been in a position where he says, I, and why didn't you tell me? No. I, I, that's usually my biggest intention yes. is to always be open with him about anything, everything, everywhere. I love that. Be open. Like when I leave the house, I tell him, okay, how do I look? How do I look today? And he'll tell me, yeah, you look good. And then tell him, you see, when you told me I look good, someone else also thought I looked good. <laughs> exactly. Nice. So they said what they had to say. Yes. And so being open is such a protective measure because it also opens the opportunity for him to also tell you, this was a very uncomfortable situation. Maybe next time be very clear. And you know, when I know I can tell my husband, I'm very confident telling men, by the way, stop it. I'm a wife. Let's, let's not do this nonsense. Don't talk to me that way. Or don't hug me that way. Or not like that. Yes. Yeah. So it becomes a natural boundary for people. But the third thing also is to tell you, be very secure in your person, even in their shortcomings. Moji and I are not the best people in life. We have very many flaws as individuals. But I, I, I'm so secure in knowing that this is his flaw and protecting it and never making it a, a weapon to pick on him on. Yeah. I mean, I've been, you've been in places where you hear people talking about him in the wrong light, and it will break my heart. But I don't, I don't need to defend him in those spaces. I, I know who I have chosen. Good. And I'm secure. If Good. He, I didn't marry Jesus. Yes. Means he have a flaw. Yes. Come on, he's Good. not God. Mm -hmm. Means also, just tell everybody, just because you get married doesn't mean he becomes perfect. No. He actually does not become perfect and his imperfections, they surface everywhere. You start feeling like, God, what did I sign up for? <laughs> but then you remember that even you, he's still marking your imperfections. Oh. So don't think of yourself as righteous. You're both working on something. Both are work in progress. You're both work in progress. So yes. be okay with working. Mm. Yeah. Powerful. Mm. Man, can you imagine if we all did that? I will say though, it's easier said than done. Yes. It's until, easier until, said than done. Until a fanye. That's when you say, who you? It's a kumali. And then you remember oh, whose daughter you exactly, are. Exactly. Like, God, like, this God, is your child first. This God. is your child. If I send him to you mm, before time, yes, it will not end it well. It won't end well for you. It won't end well for me. Yes, so, yeah, just be, be a friend. Mm -hmm. That's what I always say. Yeah, but it's mm. a beautiful union to be in. Sana. Good. Sana. Yeah, I just love how honest you guys always are. <laughs> Truthfully. It's not easy, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. But it's true. Mm -hmm. You're that girl. Thank you. I'm his girl. Hey, how? <laughs> post a lot. I'm, I'm yes. Mohia's wife. <laughs> hey, we are sorry. Now you know we know Moji is Mohia, <laughs> but now by Nyawera Kashui Mohia. I want uh, I want to bless someone with this book. Oh wow! Honestly, mm -hmm. how how much is it going for? I'll I'm send, a, you, I'll send a, you a few. I'm a inflation in me. No, it has <laughs> not. Like it. No, uh, you know why? Uh -huh. Because it comes with. Like places where you can journal, journal you yeah. know, let us deal with anger. Mm. Allow yourself to feel angry, yes. Break all the things you cannot, okay, it's not here. <laughs> she didn't write it down. Break all the glasses, no, no, no. <laughs> cry it out, yeah. write an angry letter. Yeah, it's a lot of how practical, to, practical yeah. things. I love when I'm angry, I love feeling. Let me feel yes. it, like just watch an ikasirike in it, okay? Like, stack you and be uko as you uko poa nataka nilie it, okay? But does the book come with this? 
really, really funny. That was an Ilya in it. Okay. It's it's, 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 I have sequences of showers. Like tomorrow, for example, like I can program that tomorrow in the evening at night, I shall shower and when I shower, I shall be crying just to release all that feeling I've felt oh, all through the week. Exactly. So program your anger. So feel, feel free. You yeah. know? So send me a couple I shall. if you want, guys. No, you know what to do on the comment section yeah. so that we can give to one person. But you are such a beautiful soul to talk Thank to. Thank you. You make this interview so easy. <laughs> You know, when you were saying that you got, and then you're like, who am I? Mimi, ask. You know, you don't know where I just came from, <laughs> why I was lit. <laughs> I had to wash oh, my hair. <laughs> I had to wash my hair. I was feeling so, so, so uncomfy. Yeah. I was just like, hey, this hair, man. So I went, because I was like, now if I get this interview uh -huh. wrong, those are some of the insecurities people don't like talking about, you know. But look at so it. So I came ready yeah. with the smile, the hair, and then oh, I sprayed and it. So beautiful. And look how you've made this conversation. <laughs> but easy. thank you, Lee. It's been easy. Thank you. And I think, you think um, you. by God's grace, we'll be here later with many more stories. Yes. But I really would like to appreciate you. Thank you. You have in the in the canvas of um, this media space, you've made it believable that everybody's story is valid. And it doesn't matter whether you're the high and mighty, whether you're the low in society. Yeah. You have made everybody's story feel like it is a story. You've humanized so many people, Lynn. And many, many will join me in saying it, but we are so grateful for you. You have played such a Aww. huge role. I wish you knew. I wish you knew. I, I mean, you... You epitome such a good character of people that people should believe in people. And you have believed in so many. And I know one day, by God's grace, many will also believe in you. And we can't wait to see this on a global scale. We can't wait to Aww. see this on, you know, like some like one of the images of a big thing that Kenya exported. Because you did, you believed in people. Thank so you. don't get tired, even when it feels like it is. But yeah, you're a great woman, Lee. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate. <laughs> I I very much needed that. I appreciate yeah. it. You know. So may God bless you. Yeah. May He go before you. <laughs> you can't tell me otherwise. Yeah. 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 That's how tight we are. That's how tight we are. That's how he was yes. in... I, I shall can't see you as I <laughs> Like, that's how... But anyway, jokes aside, I appreciate you. that. Thank you. I Lee. take it. Yeah. I'm, I know I'm worth yes. of it. Yes. I acknowledge it yeah. and I receive it. Yeah. And may it serve its purpose. Absolutely. In my heart yeah. and in my life. Yeah. All right? Go conquer. Have as many beautiful events out yeah, there as yeah. well. When is the next one? We just finished there. God other. willing in June. Beautiful. Yeah, God I willing hope, in June. I hope I'm I'm yeah. here for that one. Yeah. But yeah. before I mean we'll have a conversation. Before of, that. Sure. All right. Mm. So any words you wanna tell my people before we wind oh, up? Don't leave this space. <laughs> <laughs> If you know what's best for you, stay, stay, stay here. Stay, stay here. Stay. I mean, you mm. are the reason why people's stories are being heard. And so mm. your community has made lean, um, has enabled lean to do so much more. Yeah. So don't give up. Keep supporting. Keep subscribing. Keep sharing. Yes. And yeah, keep, I don't know, keep, yeah. keep, keep her in the space of believing in what she has. Thank yeah. you. So stay here. Thank you. Mm. So many take homes from today. I feel, as I said, this was more for me, guys. Oh, really? <laughs> to Kowengi. Like, it's so many take homes, yeah. you know. So many take homes. Who is the giver of this gift, mm. number one? If they don't tell you you're successful, do you believe you're successful? Mm. What success? How have you measured success, you know? Work on your weaknesses. Mm. We know our strengths. But are we willing to work on our weaknesses? weaknesses? You are deep. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> deep. <laughs> when you pen the comparison, you would have that. said you are my angel or deep, <gasps> but. Oh my God. Yeah. That's one of the women I really wish I met. For real, for real? You have no idea. Yeah. Nah. In my bookshelf is actually a lot of her books. For real? It completely. Ah, no. Oh my goodness. Now you yes. know why the caged bird sings. <laughs> 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 
tunashinda hapo sasa najua ma comment na sasa ni nacho nimeuliza ni nimevaliza we are done guys Ooh. it's been awesome having this conversation come check up on us again All once in a while this is a beautiful space yes. let me know when the event is out yes. so i can tell my people yes. because you you are you you've done it yeah. that space right there mm -hmm. it's safe thank you Lee. it's safe trust you me me and my gut feeling yeah. which we show up only to safe <laughs> event <laughs> <laughs> we show up only but it's a safe space so Thank keep you. doing it Thank salimia you. your person i shall yes and i shall out. drag him here next time <laughs> nah, he, he's good he, when time is right <laughs> he'll be here to tapiga story na to check it <laughs> you know Thank but you. i love love i love i really loved mm. this conversation no need for long outro guys let me know what you think on the comment section your take home mine is a lot mm -hmm. you know there's those interviews i keep for myself and just replay <laughs> replay and replay because i mean guys wisdom mm -hmm. wisdom also dictates we acknowledge people mm -hmm. in what they are doing best you know i love it go out and conquer thank you Lee. truthfully mm -hmm. even if in events even if in places i feel like i want someone to speak you are to go to person oh, really? and that has been given to you by god yeah. so own it and don't shrink when you are at it mm -hmm. you are deserving of all the flowers coming your way the gigs the events you are actually deserving of all the good things happening in your life mm -hmm. so go out and conquer mm -hmm. so i want to say thank you so much to our amazing partners at rentsco for sponsoring this episode remember if you are tired of paying rent and i know majority of us are tired of paying rent there is always an option of you owning that same property using the rent that you are paying and you can always visit rentsco their contact details are here on the screen call them check out the amazing properties that they have and tell them rentsco how do i go about owning my home and stop paying rent i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow at 10 am hopefully email is info at ln.digital that's where you can be able to find me a huge thank you to my team scholar muga of course our super producer dama alisema lini usiposema it's a rap for you dama i come in peace okay like i choose peace so thank you dama and the entire management at lnn joshua valerie mutange and of course our incredible editors for always coming through we don't take this for granted so to on any kesho leave me your take home on the comment section all right still grateful to the giver of this gift yes. and not the gift itself sawa sawa come on now come on come on, mm. come on. <laughs> <laughs>